please welcome Iker Solana, who plays Lorenzo. Imena La Madrid, who plays Camila. Griselda Siciliani plays Lucia. <clears throat> Her translator, Annabelle Tadona. Daniel Jimenez Cacho. <laughs> and Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu. All right, um, there are so many questions I have for all of you. I have written them down. Um, the first thing I wanna ask before we go any further is what is the song that was whistled? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, that's a, that's a nuance from a writer, director. Um, um, my, my father was a great uh, whistler, and uh, this is true. I, I remember one time that we were in Acapulco, when we were kids. We took a false wagon that was called the Bluebird, and we were five siblings, and we all were in that little Volkswagen. And we were seven people driving seven hours to Acapulco, eight hours, you remember? Really? He said that the same, so that's why we have some similarities. So we come from the same generation. But my father uh, always had this whistling of, you know, very, very subtle, very nice. And during the last years, I have been trying to figure out what was that song that I love, and nobody remembered that. So that was kind of a key element for me to to understand that memories are elusive, almost like sounds or things that you leave and then they dissolve in memory. And uh, that was a key element for me to find like a, like something so elusive like sound or a music that you don't remember and doesn't matter at the end. It's just the motion that that whistling creates on you and you cannot attach, you cannot name, you cannot put a name on it, but it's just the, the feeling that make, made me feel and this is a true thing. I have been looking for that song, and I, I have not access to that. But the, the pursuing of that thought is, is kind of what is here. You. So speaking of what is here, it, it, towards the beginning, it's described as docufiction. Um, tell me why you decided to sort of make that, you know, Silvero's um, sort of stock and trade? Where, where does that come from as a filmmaker? I think it has to do with that, that thing that when you arrive to, to an age, which is my age, I'm 5, 59 years old. I'm not maybe too old to maybe die tomorrow, but maybe I'm not too young to really feel that life is endless. And I think that moment start to get into the moment that you start getting things together, put some sense in things. And, uh, and the out of fiction come from that I'm not interested in facts. I'm not interested to tell my life as it was because I don't know exactly what has been, you know, to, to the events or the facts are not really important for me. I think the facts doesn't matter because they are always live subjectively and, and, uh, and, and they can be lived and experienced by different people in different ways, the, the way you, you, your emotions are attached to that moment. But there's an emotional conviction of things that were important or are important for me. And um, so I went into a introspection that I needed to speak about the state of mind that immigrate from a country so rich coming to another place so complex as the United States and reach to in, in, in many levels and be in the between things. And the only way I could find myself to express honestly of 
what is the experience of what is my personal experience after doing a Carmen y Arena that was an immigrant installation that people opened their minds and their souls so much I felt compelled to say, okay, what is my experience and what I can share? And it was true fiction, taking my own personal, emotional, land, acupuntural points that were important for me and fictionalize them in a way, because fiction in a way helps or reveals what reality hides and you betray reality looking for a higher truth and explaining things in a, in a more representation kind of way with no the facts or things that I leave that. But it's a sensation of things that are important. So it was through fiction and through an alter ego play incredibly by Daniel. I want an applause to Daniel because he carried the play. And it was just through, through that that I found myself able to, to share at least a piece of, of, of my emotions. So. so speaking of Daniel, there's a great, one of my favorite scenes in, in the movie is the scene in the bathroom with his father and the line about tasting success and then making sure you spit it out. Can you, both of you, speak to that scene and, and, and where that came from and, and how you chose to play that? Well, as an anticipation, it came from a real line of my father. My father has a, a difficult relation with success. And my father always said that line, which is true. And that's what I have been trying to apply in order that success in a way can, can intoxicate you if you take it seriously. So in a way, at the end, it just to take it just as an impermanent cloud that comes, you observe it, you live through, and then let it go. So that's, that's how that line came. But I think you have to tell how you experienced that. I, I experienced that in a very magical way, as many, many scenes during the shooting. There was a lot of stuff that happened to me. And in this scene, particularly, we were shooting this, and, and then suddenly I had the, the feeling that my father was coming down, and, and he suddenly appeared there. And I was really shocked because he died 11 years before, and since then I never had a contact with him. He was dead, and for me the story was over with him. So I realized he was there and I said, well, hello, father. Look, this is Alejandro. We are, we are making a movie here. It's so good. <laughs> you came. And since then, I've been having a nice dialogue with him no? now, two years after. So that was really special, really special for me. And and in many other sequences, many things happened to me. So I'm very thankful to Alejandro because he gave me this chance to make a journey inside myself. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you. So from, from fathers, we're going to go to sons. Um, there's a moment in the, 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 the scene in the kitchen where you have a line where you say, you know, you've wanted me to feel more and think less. Um, do you want to talk about, about that and, and how that felt for you, especially where you're at as an actor and as an artist in your life? <laughs> um, well, actually, uh, filming that scene was... a uh really, really fun, but um, I, I, I realized after we finished filming that there was a lot of lines from my character that, and, and from, my, uh, from the Nails character that my father, my actual father would tell me uh, when I was a kid, he would be like, you, you have everything. There's, uh, 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 you're a huevon, would say in Mexico. <laughs> you don't do anything, like you, you, you've had it all your life, you know? Uh, so filming that scene and a lot of 
other scenes in the movie. It was really uh, just like Daniel. It was like a constant meditation and and uh, and like like Alejandro has said too, like closing my eyes and uh, looking inside of me. And it was like a spiritual journey too. So um, yeah, it's a, a powerful scene, and it took a lot of time to rehearse and and shoot. And I was really proud of myself and and Daniel too because we we did it great. <laughs> is is I want to say that is his first film. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, hang on to that part about feeling and not thinking it's going to help you a lot with that. <laughs> I know. Um, speaking of which, you rely a lot in this movie on very long, incredibly well choreographed, amazing sort of shots. Do you want to talk about why those were so important in the kind of storytelling you were doing here? Well, I think that the, my, my goal was to really put the audience and, uh, uh, in, the, in the radical uh, point of view of somebody who is, in a way, revisiting his life from the ending point, from the last migration that we all will have to do with passport or with no passport. We will not be asked a passport, thankfully. But uh, uh, I think... Go, making an exercise of, as they said, that in, at the end of your life, you suddenly appear all these synthesis of your life. So it was a revisiting thing of a character. This a film is a walk in the consciousness of a person at, the, at that moment. And I want the people to really have a experience from his point of view in a, in a liquid way, in a way that the things will not be cut objectively but more into his eyes or in his experience contextually with all these lenses, wide lenses, as in a dream where everything is involved and everything counts. And those takes, in a way, for me, was a goal to get people in the shoes of this guy, you know? Yeah, the, I mean, not to nerd out on this, but what, how wide did you, why did you go for most of those? Well, we, we shot in 65 millimeters with in the incredible Darius Konji. I want an applause for Darius, please. <laughs> and before I forgot, I want an applause too for Ana Terrazas and Eugenio Caballero and all the crew that they made this film. Because I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of all the crew and all the sound and all the, the sign of everybody that is here tonight sharing because I think we all were very submersed in, in, in technically, I think we use the 65 millimeters camera with 17 millimeters, which means that it's like a you know, fish eye. So to hide the lights, to get every detail in place, to get all the choreography, we we all I think every actor, every everybody was informed of what's happening in every camera move, every step, every angle, every console move in the lights, and we went so wide that I think it has been the most challenging <laughs> film technically that I have done in my life because it, it was full of of details and nuances that that we we were trying to hide, but it was full of shit all around and it was really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, between never seeing any gear or never seeing yourself in the amount of mirrors there are in the movie is amazing. Um, so I have a question uh, for Griselda. The, the scene where, where Mateo is finally released back into the ocean, um, do you want to talk about, you know, obviously... You know, Danielle had had you know Alejandro here to talk to about you know his questions about the character. What did you? Who did you have? How did you create Lucia? Bueno, eh, voy a hablar en español <laughs> para hacerle honor a, a Bardo. Eh, bueno, también lo tenía Alejandro para hablar del personaje. Eh, todo el tiempo, desde el principio, eh, Lucía es un personaje que amo, que me parece 
adorable, no por mí, sino por, por el personaje. Eh, la escena del océano, la escena del mar, eh, tiene una potencia para mí muy... más allá de la escena, ¿no? que es la, la herida que se carga durante toda la película eh, hasta llegar a ese momento. Eh, me parece maravilloso como Alejandro quiso mostrar a esta mujer eh, que, que carga esa herida y que no pierde la sonrisa, que no pierde la alegría, que no pierde la capacidad de juego, que no pierde la sensualidad, que no pierde la luz, que ilumina lo que, lo que toca, que sostiene a su compañero en la crisis o en, el, o en el momento en el que está, que le dice lo que nadie le dice, eh, con, con dureza, eh, que le dice lo que, lo que tal vez nadie puede decirle con amor, con dulzura eh, y con, con power femenino. Gracias. Mena, when, when there's the big scene in the swimming pool um, for you at the, at the beach um, and you talk about a decision you've made to go back to Mexico, Um, oddly enough, it sounds like you may have made a similar decision in your own life, but can you, can you talk about that part about, I mean, you're someone who's traveled and you went to university in New York, where, you know, how do you feel as someone who has lived your life in, in a number of places? Uh, yeah, it's been quite a bizarre journey since the beginning of Bardo because I think every time I see the movie and uh, every day I feel more connected to the movie and to my character as well. So yeah, we have a similar journey and I had never really questioned um, immigration or you know me living in d three completely different countries um, at all until watching the movie. And so when I, when I see, and you know, we've been asked a lot about it um, and I have the privilege to be able to relate to that and to be able to see Um, see these different cultures and these different experiences from um, well, a really, I guess, a neutral standpoint because I never felt the need to relate to a certain place. Every place I've b been in, I've connected to in a different way and um, connected to the people around me. Uh, I grew up in, in Dubai before Dubai was Dubai. Um, you know, we, we were in the UAE and it was a very international place and so there were just different cultures and everyone was accepted, which is, I think, uh, something in the movie that it's something that uh, we are trying to communicate that everyone should be accepted and it doesn't matter where you're from at the end of the day, what matters is the internal, where you belong internally and your family and and um, and figuring yourself out, you know, and so, and love, you know. So I think that I grew up with a lot of love, I grew up with a lot of exception and everyone accepting each other. And then, you know, New York was a different experience and then coming to Mexico, which was such a beautiful experience because I had never connected to my roots until until then um but yeah i think i think as humans we sometimes are like we need to belong somewhere and we want to belong to, we we relate that to a external thing to a country to a uh culture to an um you know but it or a society but it's it's something internal that i think that we can all connect with and that's why i love um every time i see the f film i connect more with myself and i hope everyone can feel the same So I had the, the pleasure a few years ago of seeing the installation at LACMA of Carne y Arena. Um, it seems to me that there's a part of this that's very companionate. Um, and again, going back to the issue of like the decision to bridge both the personal and I guess what people would call the political Um, do you want to talk about that decision in your life and, and how you got there? Well, I think that um, after The Revenant, I, I, I suddenly got into this idea of making this virtual reality installation. And um, I had the opportunity and privilege to, to get into the lives of hundreds of immigrants that I interview with incredible harsh realities and circumstances that they cross the border. and. Um, 
for me, it was kind of a part journalistic kind of feel that I went through, and I was really impacted by them. You know, I think that suddenly I feel that uh, to, to emigrate from your place, it can be a decision that you made by different circumstances, but no matter what is the result of that, if you can be successful or not, we all share. When you leave your country, you, you share that wound open from something that you is to die a little as i said you know i think there's something that is missing there's something that you that you miss all day and there's a duality life that there's somebody that you left there the soul part of your soul is still hanging there and there's part of your soul here and there's this kind of battle moment that you navigate and uh, and i think that experience, as you said, has a huge impact in subconsciously. It was not a rational thing, but I, I feel that Carne Arena has a lot to do with me suddenly find myself after I expose these persons to explain their life and experiences. I said, well, OK, they give me their heart. They give me their soul. I, 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 I need to give it back in some way. And even if I have been in a very different circumstances than them, no matter what, we share that. We share something that we have missed. And I think that was a trigger point for me. You know? yep. Yep. One of the other things that I, I was really struck by with the film, and so many of your films do this, is the, you know, the symbolism and the imagery. And I think there's a temptation for people who come from a European perspective on film to think, you know, or even Hollywood, to talk about, oh, it's Fellini or it's David Lynch. But, you know, there's a, a rich tradition of, of magic realism or what, you know, in other parts of the world, certainly in, in the parts that all of you came from. Do you want to speak to that? Because I think that's a really important the, it, for me, that's a really important and beautiful thing to, to take away from this film. And if, if any of you want to respond to that as well. Well, this is a very perfect, a, a, a perfect Dia de los Muertos film, you know, <laughs> the Day of the Dead <laughs> film. <laughs> anyway, we have a huge tradition of, you know, our literature, our music, our, our culture is intense and is maximalistic and is rich in ancestors in a way are used to to have a dual existence you know there's a coexistence of the what they call the supernatural but actually our dreams are part of ourselves our subconscious our the lines between the reality and imagination are all the time intertwined with us. We try to always block that and make everything rational, but there's a left and a right side of the mind, and we block the right side. But in the tradition of our culture, I was fed by great literature from Rulfo, from Octavio Paz, from, from Cortázar, from Borges, uh, obviously, you, Marquez, and the, I'm just naming the, the mainstream ones that sometimes the American people know, but sometimes they didn't even doesn't know about it. But our story is rich on the way that we fragment the time and the space and the spirits and the presence of the things that are not visible and material. So in a way, I think that the, all the reference or even the music that is kind of very Oaxacan bands from this ancestral kind of thing that always are beautifully out of tune and you can play in the funerals, or in the weddings, and that has this nostalgic thing. So I think this film came, in a way, from from what I have been fed yeah, as as a kid. You know, I think that the reference um, are very much into our own culture. Not to say that I am absolutely fascinated by the universal culture of the world filmmakers of the American literature and paintings and music. You know, I have been privileged to have the culture, to have been admired. The last century was changed by the American culture, you know, and science. So what, what I'm saying, I think that to, to, to uh, embrace all that, uh, I think we are all the results of what we have been eating all our lives. And I think this film is part of, yes, what I have been 
uh, fed universally, but very much in, in our own culture and story, you know. And that was a, an attempt to recoup that kind of history that we own, you know. Daniel, you have anything to add to that? <laughs> no, no, he, he says that beautifully. And just, no. Uh, for me, it was like a very natural, no? very familiar, very natural. Uh, I must say that when I finally got to read the script, because it was forbidden for us to read it, <laughs> but I begged him, please let me read it at least once. And then he said, okay, read it once, but don't study it. No? So when I read it, for me it was very clear, the, the line, the story. I never got confused that this is back, this is forward, this is a dream. Or, no, it was really easy. No? When I saw it, then it was more shocking. Then it was like, oh my God, this is really complex. But when I read it, it was really simple. So just to say that maybe I'm used to, to this kind of, of uh, material. No? Yeah. Right. Um, I think that is all the time that we have. Um, but thank you all for staying. And thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Bardo will be in theaters, I guess, tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Um, yes, so we're... thank you. Thank you all for making an thank extraordinary you, movie. Thank, thank you, you very Scott. much. Thank, thank you. you for being thank you. here. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, the AFI. Thank you.